So when the Android framework goes to start your application from a launcher icon or an app shortcut or what you see when you're doing multi-window, those are all activities, right? So they really are kind of the entry point into your app's UI, right? When the user goes to launch your app, they're launching an activity. What you actually want is you want to build the layering you actually need. So in this case, we can have multiple things, multiple destinations within an activity, right? And share information across each of these destinations by using the activity scope as an actual useful element now. So for example, you could have a shared view element or view model that both destinations talk to. So one destination could put data in and the other one could observe changes to that data, right? You don't need to work at the application scope level for this to work. When we're thinking about this, like if we're moving from this activity world to a destination world, we really want to make that world as easy as possible, right? Otherwise, why would we move? Um, and we focused on kind of two things. One was the that global UI kind of thing. Like, how can we make that part easy, right? Like, it's something that every app kind of has the same kind of patterns, um, and we really don't want that to be something that takes a lot of effort to do. Um, also, the navigating between destinations, right? That start activity, activity compat thing. Um, can we make that even easier? So we started the navigation architecture component, uh, and we introduced it to you all in I.O. this last year in 2018. If you have arguments to something, how do we make this nice? Um, so we built a Gradle plugin called SafeArgs which for every destination in your graph, such as this main fragment, um, we generate a directions object, which has a nice, simple show profile method, which gives you a directions object with type safe arguments that you define in your navigation graph, and then you just call navigate, and that's it. Um, we'll take care of all of the fragment transaction, all of that sort of stuff for you. So this makes it a lot easier. So rule number one of testing things at the destination level is don't test at the destination level. Um, it's really the number one thing with testing, right? It's making things nice and separate and extracting some of that business logic out of a destination and into something you can test in isolation. So how can we do this? Um, so last, this Monday, um, we released Fragment 1.1, the first alpha. And with this became a new artifact called Fragment Testing, which is about like six years overdue. Um, and it's really around being able to test your Android X fragments in isolation, right? Separate from an activity, separate from everything else, but being able to test and verify that that fragment is doing the right thing. We have a mockable layer, right? One of the things that we found when building navigation is that most companies, once they got to a certain point, and they're like, wow, we should add some testing. And they're like, wow, we can't really test start activities. So they built their own navigator, which just provides a layer to mock out the start activity calls. Well, that, that layer is handled for you. It's called nav controller. We test nav controller. So now what we can do in our activities is just mock out that nav controller and confirm that, yes, you're calling the right navigate calls. You can actually do constructor injection into fragments, right? You no longer need to only have a no args constructor to use fragments. You can use a fragment factory to instantiate your fragments for you. We do recommend using multiple activities. <gasps> Not a lot, though. Um, so what I'd like to say is you don't actually need multiple activities. What you need are multiple tasks. I'd really like to end this with one note. Um, a lot of you have existing apps that have very different kind of experiences. And I'd like to say, 
do what's right for your app. Um, I think single activity is great. If I was writing a new activity, it would also be single activity. Um, but I realize that doing, going to your PM and be like, hey, let's rip the whole app apart um, is sometimes a hard sell. Um, some of them don't like your current app, so maybe you'll actually get some, uh, yeah, okay, go for it. Um, really depends on your own experience. If you find yourself contorting your own experience and it's not making sense to you, don't do it, right? If something is working, that's good. Keep it working, right? But if you're finding you're running into issues, you're having inconsistent behavior, right? Or you want to do things like shared view models, maybe that's the time to think about moving towards a single activity structure. <laughs>